We're finally at assembly. First thing we're gonna do is thread the fiber optics through those tiny holes that we drilled. This can feel a lot like you're fighting an octopus made of plastic. It's worth noting that this still takes a little while to do because you have to be really patient. For each cluster of fiber optics, I'll use a little piece of tape to make sure that the thread doesn't back out while I'm working with the other clusters of fiber optic thread. If you're having a hard time threading the fiber optics, you can use flush cutters to cut the ends at an angle to create a point that'll thread through the holes a little bit easier. Threading all of the fiber optics creates enough tension to hold in all of the wiring that's going to go inside of the Lancer's body. I'm leaving a lot of slack right now that'll tighten up later on. Once the fiber optics are threaded, I can use a little bit of green stuff to hold the push button switch into place on the top of the Lancer where the turret's going to get attached. Positioning the button is tricky, and the green stuff helps with keeping the button in place until I can apply a little bit of super glue. When you're gluing the button to the top of the Lancer, make sure that you're gluing only the edges, otherwise you won't be able to push the turret down. You'll notice throughout assembly that I'm never using glue directly on the circuit boards. That's because the fiber optics and other components will hold the circuit boards in place. Next I'm going to glue the engine LEDs into the nacelles. The lenses of the LEDs are going to stick out part way and are going to go inside of the engine nozzles. I'm only gluing the LEDs into the top half of the Lancer body. A little bit of glue inside the engine nozzles allows me to glue them to the lenses of the LEDs. Since I cut away the plastic tabs that originally held on the nozzles, I'll be able to seal the bottom of the Lancer's body to the top and it won't interfere with the nozzle placement. Next I'm going to thread the power pigtail through the bottom half of the Lancer body. This rough fitting allows me to make sure that the pigtail fits flush against the ventral ridge and that the entire body does close without it pushing the power pigtail out of place. This took a number of tries and I actually had to extend the pigtail to make sure that it reached the port that I had cut out in the bottom of the Lancer, as well as re-thread it to go underneath some of the fiber optics and other components so that the entire thing could close. Before sealing the body, I spread some silicone glue where the fiber optics were threaded through the holes. Make sure that you use silicone glue and not super glue, because super glue will actually make the fiber optics brittle and possibly snap the fiber optic cables after you've threaded them through and closed up the body. I found this out the hard way. Once you get the halves to close, you can use the engine housings to hold the nacelles together. You don't even need to use any glue. The tension of all the components inside of the Lancer's body will keep the entire thing shut and held pretty firmly. A tiny amount of super glue on the outside of the power pigtail makes sure that it doesn't slide around too much, although really there's nowhere for it to go. When everything is dry, you can use flush cutters to trim off any of the excess fiber optics. To attach the turret, I'm actually going to use a drill bit as the pin that holds it onto the push button switch. I dip the drill bit in a little bit of super glue, thread it through the plastic turret, glue it to the push button switch, and then thread it through the hole that I created in the last video. Once it's dry, I can use flush cutters to cut away the rest of the drill bit and just leave the turret attached to the button. The plastic button actually rotates inside of the socket, so don't be surprised if the turret can rotate. And now the moment of truth, putting it all together and plugging it in. This whole project took me about 10 hours to finish, even though it was the second time that I've done it. I'm pretty happy with my results the second time around. If you stay tuned to this channel, my next project that I'm going to start is going to be a GR75 medium transport, which is one of the epic ships. Thanks for watching.